Hello, good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever this finds you today. This is a little follow-up that I wanted to do about a video I did a couple days ago where I was just encouraging, wanted to offer some encouragement with for moms with littles. And uh, this is this is another part of, of that encouragement, not just for moms with littles, but for everybody. <laughs> I'm Jessica Amos. I am a mindfulness teacher and a boundaries and relationship coach. And this is a really important subject that's been coming up a lot for me lately, especially in the last couple days. I've been on a road trip with my kids. We're not too far from home, but we're just sort of wandering um, down the Northern California uh, mountain range. We're in Mount Shasta right now, and I, I, they're they're almost 14. My son's almost 14, and my daughter is 15. And the encouragement I was offering in my previous video, just for some context, is is for for moms or even parents with little kids. Uh, really, just saying, keep keep with it. Keep doing the hard work. Keep keep establishing boundaries, uh, keep putting your kids to bed on time, keep saying no <laughs> to, to, to them and not giving them everything they need, keep doing the hard work it takes to raise little children because it really does pay off when they, when they get bigger. And so here I am on a road trip with my kids and, and they're older now, just like when they're younger, they have um, ideas about things, they want things. We are all individual human beings. So it doesn't have to be a road trip with your kids. It can be sharing a home or a space with, with anybody. It can be coworkers, it can be extended family, it can be strangers on the street. Being in relationship with other human beings, being within the vicinity, within the context, just within proximity to other human beings can often cause us to feel very frustrated and annoyed. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. It's a very, very, very human thing to feel frustrated and annoyed with strangers and also with the people we love. And so often we feel guilt for feeling frustrated, for feeling annoyed, or for even having judgments around how another person is showing up. And Sometimes this has to do with our capacity. Um, an example, just a small example is uh, yesterday. Well, this road trip is kind of bringing it out with me and my kids. We're just, we're in the car together. We're very tightly bound together and even sharing a house and a space and going on hikes and meals, right? We're all individual people who sometimes want different things and are experiencing different things. So an example yesterday is, um, we are going uh, to this new place because we're on a road trip, we're in a new place. We're gonna go on a hike and we're gonna go and visit some lakes, maybe do some swimming, but I've never been here before. And I'm also a highly sensitive introvert. I'm social, I love people, I love being out in the world, I love exploring new things, but it takes a lot of energy and effort for me to do those things as a highly sensitive. I get anxious in groups and crowds. And so we're showing up at this parking spot in this beautiful nature spa space and it's full of people and it's full of cars and I don't know where we're going and I have to park and I have to figure out where all the stuff is and I'm overwhelmed and I'm kind of getting some anxiety so I have to manage that and then I have to manage that I have these two other humans who are looking to me for where we're going and on top of it my daughter is like why are all these people parking in the middle of the street and she's asking me these questions from her own anxiety right um and and I just kind of snapped back at her. I don't know if I, I was kind of sarcastic. I was kind of demeaning. My whole tone was just like, why do you care? What's it matter, right? And I didn't say it like that, but it was, um, those weren't my words, but that was my tone. And um, it got her to be quiet <laughs> in the moment so I could focus on me. But then later, when we were having dinner that evening, the kids were sitting and having a conversation about a conflict they had had earlier in the day about who gets to sit in the front seat of the car. And then as I started having that conversation with them, it's coming out that, um, you know, the way that I responded to her was not sitting well with her, that she had been feeling anxious and I was anxious and there's all this stuff. I'm telling you all of this because the conversation I had with my kids last night is the way that I've raised them and what I value is, is having open communication. 
open communication about how we want to be treated, about how we want to be talked to. When my kids say, I didn't like that, or I didn't like how you said that, or I took that personally, or that hurt my feelings or whatever, I know that that's not my heart and my intention, intention towards them. And they know that too. Uh, but not always. And so my question to them is always, well, how would you prefer that I respond? First of all, because that's educating me on who you are and how you communicate and what you want. And it's also teaching them to be aware of what they want and what they need. But there's only, there can be a limit to that because sitting around and talking all day about our feelings, something I love, but it's not always the most productive. So here we are feeling frustrated and annoyed with each other, all having our own personal experiences. And what it comes down to in a lot of ways is having grace, grace and compassion for ourselves and for each other as human beings. Yes, we can talk about our feelings, but also there's a limit to that. There's a limit to going, okay, I'm a human being who gets overwhelmed for each of us to be able to say that, to have some grace and compassion with the other person, right? And say, okay, she's feeling anxious. He's feeling anxious. I'm feeling anxious. There's grace for everybody to be feeling that. I'm feeling annoyed. I'm feeling frustrated. It's not personal, right? And we don't need to talk about it and we don't need to do all the, the feelings and the dredging it up and the having to sort it out. Sometimes that's important, but that's exhausting. So my encouragement to you is Maybe you don't always have to have the conversation with the person about your feelings. I encourage it highly if that's something you're practicing. If it's feeling overwhelming, if it's too much to be constantly talking about your feelings, just practice some grace and compassion. Go, this is human. This is human. We're all human. We all have these feelings. It's not personal. <laughs> <laughs> it's not personal and it helps us and I find that it's helping me and my kids um, hey thanks Ben <laughs> thanks I'm glad you like the shades um, it helps us it helps us show up in relationship um, with a little more ease uh, a little more peace knowing that we don't always have to talk everything out we can reserve that for the big stuff right and just being in proximity to other humans can be frustrating and annoying so it is I'm annoying you're annoying we're all annoying <laughs> and we're all fabulous and we're all wonderful and we all deserve to show up however we are okay so let that be okay it's totally okay uh, yeah <laughs> All right, I hope you're having an awesome day. I'm enjoying this beautiful sun in the backyard. We're gonna go on another hike today and do some more exploring. And in the meantime, grace, 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 compassion, compassion, compassion. Yes, more ease, more peace. Thank you, Ben, love that. Thank you for being here with me. Remember to stay with yourself today. You do you, lots of love, bye.